Welcome back yeah. to shut up. Welcome back to my multiverse podcast. I am the leader of the Shiz Nation and the creator of my multiverse, Lou Sky Sapphire, and I'm back today because I wasn't back. I wasn't here last week, and Raven took over, but now I'm back. And here we have a bunch of our members here with us, and some of them are new. Uh, let's start with the fire stirring Ruby, as she's known on the forum, also known as Ruby Chan. Introduce yourself. Hi, people. Fire Steering Ruby here, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? I mean, don't you want to plug yourself on DeviantArt or something? Um, not really. I don't know <laughs> well, sure right now. Well, she's on DeviantArt, and she's also on fanfiction.net. I'll add the links later on the uh, description box. Yeah. Huh. And Thanks. also, yep, yeah, thanks, no problem. And... Of course, we have Narzilia back, also known as Narzi Chan or that Austrian Ani chick. Hi, guys. <laughs> I'm the queen of Umlaut. <clears throat> and she's also known as a, a rare species that we just discovered, a spider cat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And how does that work? How can you be a spider and a cat at the same time? Yeah. It's a good question. <laughs> I can her and I'm into bondage. Does it explain it? We're well, always hunting Natsuki all the time. <laughs> oi. oi, oi. And um, also returning is Sway Chan, uh, Ivanetta Sway Bell. Yay, I can pronounce it this time. It's Zwei. <laughs> Whatever. Finally, you learned to pronounce it. Zwei. Awesome. Sway. Sway. It's Sway. Because I say so. Now, introduce yourself. Okay, I am even at Zweifel on the forum, or Zweichan here on the Skype. Um, yes, that's probably it. <laughs> I bet nobody remembers me from the last session. Uh, yes. Because I am still a newbie to all these things. Now, nah, but you made quite an impact so far. And talking about uh, making an impact, uh, next is... Okami Dezu, also known as Dai, also known as Mulan. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Okami Des. I'm known as Dai, and the only person who actually calls me Mulan is Lou. So Real- is it yeah. really? Raven doesn't even call you that? Aside um, from sweet no, cheeks? Everyone else, Dai. everyone else calls me Dai. Some uh, some people call me Okami Des. Some people call me Okami. Some people call me Oki. I don't okay. really know where that came from. Um but yeah. You're the only one who calls me Mulan. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and um, so it's Okami Des. The U is not uh, is silent, right? Yeah, I, cl- I use it silently. Okay, because I know people say Dezu Dezu and that's wrong, I guess. So I don't know. Um, and of course, last but not least is Weto Chan, also known as Pape. Say hello, Weto. Hi, everyone. Weto Chan is here, or Weto Nesama, in Skype and. You know, when I start Skype and all people, all peeps start to call me Pape. I don't know, but <laughs> thank you for that. I really love that nickname. My nickname. It is much I, easier to call you Puppy than it is to call you Weto on a summer. Weto, just like Weto, Weto, Weto. Just, I don't know. I know, just like, uh, thank you for calling me that Pape. I don't know. I really get into that. <laughs> oh. Like I mean, I I never stop you from calling me anything different. Mm-hmm. And um, you. tell us about your DeviantArt and everything else you do. Uh, me? Yep. Uh, what I do, you know, I'm doing a Ziznet Dojinsi and Ziznet fan art, and now I just really get into si- not now, Natsuki, and now because blame on RZ because you really brainwaves my mind. <laughs> 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 and just she started, <laughs> and she start to pull out my wild side. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, you know, I should have asked you this two uh, shows ago if you were there. Uh, you arrived late, if I remember correctly. But let's uh, ask you this before we start the main show. Mm-hmm. Do you prefer 
uh, Natsuki Kuga and Nao Yuki, or do you prefer Natsuki Kruger and Juliet Nao Zong, or however do you pronounce it? Um. What? Mm-hmm. What? What? Do you prefer do you prefer Nat Nao and Hime or Otome, basically? I prefer uh, prefer is my Otome, I think, <laughs> because it's, the story is re- I think it's, the story is really really smart because. The development of the character is very good because uh, from a zero is like spoiled little brat and Arika into turn into real queen and have responsibility. I think this is really really smart because uh, that story have um, the really strategy to take over with Wind Bloom what or, or whatever it is. I think it's just good. It's really catching because and um, have some funny and something like that but for Hime I think the best is just for this not I think the Zizuru relationship with Natsuki is really hard it's make me tear crying yeah. <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> okay. this is my oh yeah right. one thing one thing I want uh I forget to uh, I forget to say it. Uh, I think I like now in Otome because she she is really have uh, you know like have more presence in Otome than in Hime. That's right. Huh? So okay, um, I'm gonna st- uh, start things off with the Otome discussion. Uh, I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna go to the to Ruby and die after that because, you know, they only have limited time. So I'm mm-hmm. going to put my thoughts in here. Now, when Otome first came out and when I first heard about it, I just finished the My Hime series and I was expecting a sequel, really. Because, you know, My Hime left you hanging and you wanted more. And you wanted to know what happens next after that, if they fight any more evildoers or whatnot. And, and by the way, I did not see that, that, that troll trailer that Sunrise made, that movie trailer. At the time, so I so I, I I automatically assumed that Otome was a direct sequel. So when I watched it, I was shocked to to see this completely different world and completely different. Well, it wasn't completely different characters, but um, these characters took on new roles, and it confused me at first. So uh, what I do like about my Otome better than Hime is uh well, it's a lot of things really. I have to list them all down, but. What people don't give a credit for is the fact that people say that the character relationships were stronger in Hime, and that I can somewhat agree with, but they say it in a way where there was no character relationships in my Otome at all, and I think that's bullshit. I think there was a lot of character relationships in Otome, more than Hime, I think, because there was a bigger roster of girls, and not only that, um, you had three main stories going on rather than two because in he made it was only Natsuki's story to me and and my story and Mikoto was just like a big plot device <clears throat> whereas in Otome it was Arika's story Mashiro's story and Nina's story and you see these three pretty much developed throughout the whole thing they went from point A to point Z over time throughout the series and people don't really see that because they wanted more Shiznat I guess they wanted more My Tokiha they wanted you know I can understand that you know this is not a direct sequel but again it, it did something different and you have to give it that much credit for and I think that's what I liked about it and most of what I liked about it is that it was more grand and visual than My Hime you know My Hime was just taking place at an academy this took place on various kingdoms and you know nations and the scope was much bigger than Hime, much bigger. My Hime felt more confined. There was more visionary sense in my Otome. And I think that's what really stands out for it. And of course, I consider my, uh, not my, uh, uh, Arika Yumemiya, uh, the new Sailor Moon. So when you see her, st- <laughs> so when you see her storyline, <laughs> so, so when you see her storyline, yeah, you see a lot of, um, you know, com- connections to Sailor Moon. So being a big Sailor Moon fan, I enjoy that a lot, to see this hero uh, overcome the odds and defeat the main villain in the end, who is Nina, turn evil, with the power of love, rather than killing her off. It, it was, if any of you watched the fifth season, Sailor Stars, that is the same exact ending. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if the ending of Otome was inspired by episode 200 of Sailor Moon. Okay, 
that's it for me. Um, Dai, what did you think of uh, my Atome in comparison to Hime? And did you think it was better or what? What are your thoughts on it? I don't want to say one is better than the other, but I do think that people simplify Otome a lot more than it really should be. Um, I'm, when you look at Hime, there's all those big child fights that you have, especially towards the end when the Obsidian Lord is kind of playing puppet with all the, all the little girls. Yeah. And it's just a lot of fighting going on. But in Otome, you have to realize that in addition to the fighting, there's a lot of political disputes going on in the background. You can't yeah, just go up and go, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick my ultimate on you and take over your country. That doesn't work that way. They have to do politics. They have to make sure other countries are happy. They have to, there's all that background stuff. They have to make sure the people of the country are happy. Um, and that's one thing that people don't really realize when they think, oh, these ultimates are fighting for um, God knows the reason. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like, they're, uh, they're kind of like the um, United States with um, nuclear weapons. The, the Otome is the nation's nuclear weapon, supposedly. Right. They, they use them to spread fear or, or uh, regain a control of balance between nations and make sure everyone keeps the peace and everything. So. Right, and part of the reason why I do like Otome more, and I'm not saying I actually do like my yeah. team less than Otome, it's just... One thing that I do see better in Ultimate is I, I like the villains in, I, in Ultimate more. The, the, the plot they had, the, the way everything was executed. I mean, Nagi, he, he was kind of an asshole, but I like that kind of asshole. Where he, he, he doesn't just rush into things. He, he has his own agenda. He wants something. He thinks his people want something, and he goes for it. Right. And he was also helped by other uh, great villains that people don't give credit for. I mean... You know, Reito, <laughs> um, City, um, City Lord Reito was kind of lame in uh, the last battle. Even though um, it's a really classic moment, it happens so fast. It's more of a confrontation than a battle. So when you see Otome, you not only get this this asshole. Not, uh, by the way, I always wanted to see Nagi become a villain. I always wanted because I, I hated him in Hime. So to see him in Otome as a villain was like, yes, icing on the cake for me. Like, yes, finally, they did something right. Like, but, but putting in characters like Tomoe and certain Otome that don't get along with uh, the good guys, like, um, who's that one, that Otome that Midori killed off? Fier, I think her name was? Fier Gross. Gross, Fier yeah. Gross. Yeah, her. Like, there are a lot of like, little enemies here and there for Otome, and I like that. It, there's more conflict, supposedly. And in addition to constant battles. Keep going, Di. Um, I lost my spot. <laughs> now, um, you, were just, you were just talking about villains, uh, like in Nagi, I guess. Right, um, and, also, and, and like you mentioned, all the different ultimates. I mean, like everyone has a, di you know, a difference, in, a conflict in interest. So obviously, even though all the ultimates went to school together, they have different views on how things should be run, so... And some people, some people just kind of follow their master mindlessly. And the other people just have their own goal in mind. And I mean, that's real. It, it shows a lot more human nature than I think some people actually give it credit for. Exactly. And then when you think of certain relationships of serious conflict, like oh boy, here it goes. Um, Sergey with Nina and and Arika, that love triangle. I mean, what do you think of that? I just don't think that love triangle should have ever existed to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Sergey is too old for both of them, in my opinion. Um, I'm, I don't even really know what his age is, but he's old enough to be a father, it seems. Then I think he's too old for both Nina and Arika. They should have brought in somebody else if they wanted a love triangle to happen.